All right, we're back. I'm pleased to welcome my friend Karen Cater, who is the CEO of Digital Promise. Karen, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I know the hallways are crowded for sort of navigating your way through three floors and thousands of people. Sure. And we're going to take about 10 minutes to talk about Digital Promise. Uh, for Karen, for those of us who don't know or, or have a passing familiarity, what do we need to understand about Digital Promise? So Digital Promise is a nonprofit organization that was authorized by Congress in the Higher Education Act in 2008 signed into law by George Bush and then launched in 2011 out of the White House um, at an event and uh, it since then has been a completely independent uh, 501c3. Okay, and what do you do? So Digital Promise has a mission to um, spur innovation to advance the opportunity to learn for all all people, all All right, so that sounds like anywhere. nice government talk. That yeah. sounds like a really big high vision, That's right. high mission. What do you do? <laughs> Um, so we have a variety of, of initiatives, but we, we sort of think of our work yeah. um, at the intersection of four important things. First is networks. We believe in the power of networks to connect people with each other, to connect people with ideas. Um, we believe... Physical networks or metaphorical networks? Uh, people networks. They're, okay. they're networks. They're, yeah. they're not metaphorical. Like no, actually I mean, connecting I, people you're, with you're not each providing other. money for campuses to do E-rate and connectivity. Not te not wire networks. Not, not wire networks. People networks. People connecting networks. people with each oh, other yeah. and connecting ideas with people. Yeah, that kind okay. of thing. So networks. Okay. The second is we believe in the power of um, the power of uh, research to ground and inform and inspire ideas. Right. Uh, so I can tell you a little bit about some work. Evidence instead area. of opinion and epiphany. Evidence instead of opinion and epiphany, and right. trying to get people to use evidence and, and access evidence. We know a lot about um, academic research right. is. Um, that it's very inaccessible and it's many times behind a paywall and so if we want people to use research findings, especially research findings that were um, funded, that you know, research was funded by taxpayer money, we want to find ways of getting it great smart access. Mm -hmm. um, so I can talk more about that and we have a research map I'd love to tell you about. Um, so networks, research, we also believe in the power of stories to uh, because we know that stories inspire ideas and um, kind of incent action. Narrative is critical. Narrative is critical. People can get a sense of like how do I how do I do that? They can see it. They can see someone that's like them. Um, so that's actually narrative really helps you visualize as opposed to just throwing up on a whiteboard. Exactly. Yeah. So the power of stories, and then fourth is the power of engagement, and because we definitely know that engagement is what's going to fuel a lifelong powerful learning opportunities. And is the mission like focused on K-12 or, or higher ed or, or across the board? So we, we've started kind of in K-12, but our mission is um, is much bigger. It's really learning for everybody at all ages. Um, mm -hmm. The actual inspiration behind Digital Promise was that akin to the higher the um, land grant act that set aside public lands for the power of um, higher education for all Americans, the idea was we should set aside an online learning or spectrum in order to support a free online learning opportunity for all Americans. That was the big idea. So it's really people of all ages were interested in how uh, technology and research and understanding can uh, augment human performance for little children, for um, uh, for uh, K-12, for higher education, and actually we are particularly also interested in uh, supporting or figuring out how innovation and technology and research can support the 36 million adults in this country who are low literacy, low numeracy, and low job skills. So you're actually, are you actually managing projects? You are giving grants for people to do projects? We manage projects. We're a, we're a, uh, we're a uh, nonprofit organization, right. and so we're philanthropically funded, and we have corporate partners, and they fund our work. So our work is um, is actually doing things. We like to say we're not a think tank, we're a do tank. Okay. And we uh, have... Uh, but, but most of the work is done by Digital Promise as opposed to Digital Promise acting I can't just say the Gates Foundation, the Spencer Foundation, Absolutely. in terms of being the funding Absolutely. support for right. projects that are commissioned or proposed. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Two or three most prominent, or you know, the, the, your, you know which of your children <laughs> do you the love the most, children. if you will? Yeah, that's a, such an interesting way to put it. I love all of our children, and right. they're all uh, the inter and I think I, what I love most is the interaction between right. all of these projects and initiatives that we have. Um, so, for example, we have the League of Innovative Schools that is all about engaging the most forward-leaning, interesting superintendents in the country to come together to build a, a network um, 
amongst themselves so that they can share ideas um, with each other and then they can also share them broadly um, and, and externally. So that's incredibly important. Um, we also work deeply with 46 middle schools. This is a project sur supported by Verizon. Uh, so our job is to not only um, provide the tablets and the data plans uh, for all of the students and teachers in these 46 middle schools, but also to help them be successful. We have a coach in every school. Um, we work a lot with documentation and storytelling as a means of reflection and understanding what's going on. Um, and then we, you know, we, we work with the leadership, we work with the, the, the teachers, et cetera, to help make sure that they're fully successful. When you were going through the four program areas, you seemed to be particularly excited about the research. So, so very quickly about the research. Yeah, so we have a really like This is a tech conference, you know, tech, culture of this evidence. This is totally cool, tech, yeah. cool technology. Uh, so for the geeky technology people amongst us, it's a bibliometric visualization of learning research. So basically, I'm sorry, put on a decoder ring for the rest of us. Second conference. Yeah. So the idea is um, we have uh, uh, citation data from over 100,000 uh, journal articles, peer-reviewed journal articles, and we've created a visualization of the in, of the connections between topics, um, between topics, and then the the sort of uh, amount of information about a given topic. So if we have a topic like uh, uh, autism or teacher education or whatever, the size of the, the bubble or the, the size uh, represents the amount of content on that topic. And then the lines between one topic and another represent the strength of connection. The relationships. The relationships. Mm -hmm. And then you can click on any one of the topics or the subtopics um, and, and up comes the top cited research article, the top cited authors, the top keywords, um, et cetera. So, so it's kind uh, of a, type of a type of typographic, that's a map. It's a map. So it's like a geographical a map. map. Right. Okay. It's a geographic. Topology map. It, it yeah. absolutely is. And okay. like you can get a list view so you can see everything in a list. Yeah. You can get a, a uh, sort of a network view and you can also get but the a graphical representation kind of actually gives view. you a better sense of the relationships and the strength of those relationships. Absolutely. Okay. And then you can click in and go deeper on any one of the topics as well. Mm -hmm. What else do we need to know about digital promise? Let's see. So the other, so um, as I said, we have an adult learning initiative that works with the, really tries to figure out how, and we know many adults have mobile technologies now, so we want to figure out all the ways that the mobile technologies can be powered to support a more productive future for, for adults who need a better job um, and that kind of thing. So we have, we have some really interesting work going on. We like to connect our research work with our engagements with entrepreneurs and with practitioners. So it's kind of a Venn diagram and we always are figuring out the ways that what researchers know can power up what entrepreneurs and practitioners know. What entrepreneurs are doing uh, is informed by practitioners and, and, you know, and around you go. So connections are important, networks are important, stories are important, research is important, and at the end of the day, really compelling, engaging learning environments are uh, incredibly important so that it inspires lifelong learning. Yeah, so a lot of the conversation education at large, and particularly about education technology, what are the metrics for success? What are the metrics for success that, that you use at Digital Promise in terms of your own efforts, in terms of we're doing this well and you know, there are a couple of things that we need to do better? That's a great question. It's, it, I'll be very honest, it's very hard to figure out how to measure um, impact of, of uh, social, uh, the social impact or the impact of the things we're doing. Um, we have a lot of metrics that are associated with, you know, just kind of analytics and, you know, downloads and engagements and shares and those kinds of things around some of our, some of our work. But we also... Um, those are the usual internet eyeball yeah, kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah which is, kind of, you know, gets you a little bit of the way, but right. it really doesn't tell you, so what are people doing as a result of this? Right. So I would say much of it's anecdotal. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly trying to figure out. So if any of the listeners, anybody has ideas about how you actually best measure the impact of um, or the kind of the diffusion of innovation um, we're we're all ears we'd love to have some great ways of, of doing that great Karen thanks very much for joining us thank you very you can much find digitalpromise.org absolutely and the research map is researchmap.digitalpromise.org great thanks thank Karen you. thank you we're going to take a quick pause Christine Willig from McGraw Hill K-12 is going to be with us in a moment